The movie begins with a sweeping shot of the expanse of Indian Ocean. Here we find a dark red shipping container bobbing up and down. As we take this in, a male voice tells us, all is lost. What has happened to the man? This is Movie Shortens. Follow us today to the survival drama film called All Is Lost 2013. Be aware, there are spoilers. Jumping back eight days, an aging sailor comes to bed in the hole of his yacht. He is woken by the sounds of splintering wood and water washing in. He gets up to investigate and we find his boat has collided with the abandoned shipping container. It is now stuck and the collision has left a gaping hole in the side of his boat. The man attempts to free his yacht using a pole, but it is wedged on too tightly. Next, he collects a sea anchor from inside his boat and this proves more fruitful, freeing his vessel. As he begins to head off, however, he realizes he has left it behind, so turns back to collect it. He then sets a course and heads cautiously away from the container. Down in his hold, with the water now nearly waist deep, he checks the boat's electrics. They have failed due to the intruding water, so he no longer has automated assistance to help clear the water. He then inspects the damage to the boat, pulls out a wooden box containing a repair kit, and drains the flood water from this. Next, he fashions a wooden pole into a handle in order to help him manually pump the water from the inside of his boat. Later, he pauses to eat a tin of cold food before sleeping above the remaining water in a hammock. The next day, he gets to work fixing the hole in the side of the boat from a harness which allows him to do so from the outside, hoisted above the ocean. Following this, he continues the laborious process of attempting the clearest hole of water using the hand pump in the stern. Later, we find him mopping the wooden floors of his interior and inspecting his handiwork, having sealed the hole. Fortunately, his running repairs appear to be holding when he puts them to the test. As a next step, the man collects a battery from below the floor of the yacht. He takes this up to the deck and attempts to connect it to his radio. He also consults his maps before abandoning them and turning to a book presumably for support in how to use them. This he quickly casts aside and returns to the deck. His radio briefly flickers into life and he attempts to deliver an SOS call from his boat, which we learn is named the Virginia Jean. His transistor then appears to die once more. We imagine his distress signals to have gone unheard. Later that night, our forlorn main character begins to sip on whiskey before pouring himself a bigger measure. He is busy cooking dinner on his gas stove when it begins to rain. Seemingly drawn to the fresh water, he clambers up to the deck, rolls up his sleeves and takes pleasure in feeling the sensation of the raindrops falling onto his skin. He then finishes off his home-cooked meal before turning back to his book, which he reads in the dark using a headlamp. He soon puts this aside to drift off, however. The next day we find him in a harness once again. This time he ascends to the top of his mast in an attempt to reconnect an antenna lead which has become loose. From his vantage point high above the ocean, he is able to see a storm is approaching and quickly makes his way back down to batten down the hatches. He quickly puts away all of his glassware and fills a jerry can with water from his hand pump tap. He then takes an opportunity to shave, in order, we imagine, to confront the storm looking his best. With the winds and waves becoming increasingly aggressive, the man dons his bright orange waterproofs and returns to the deck. Here, he harnesses himself to his yacht and attempts to crawl to the front of the boat to reduce the size of its sail. As he does so, however, he is thrown overboard. He then uses the harness to pull himself back to the vessel and clamber aboard. Once back on deck, he continues his work on the sail before returning to the hold in the hole, stripping off his overalls and collapsing exhausted in a heap. The intensity of the storm continues to increase though. Soon, from inside the cabin, we see the boat is capsized as our hero takes a perch on the ceiling. It then rights itself fairly quickly and he is able to take a proper seat once again. Next, he returns to the deck once more, but his boat is hit from the side by a massive wave, rolling it over and casting him into the ocean for a second time, this time without a harness. However, as it rolls in from below the surface, he is able to grab a hold of a handrail and return to the deck as the yacht rights itself. The roll, however, has brought the mast down with it, rendering the boat something of a wreck. With the mast dragging in the water and throwing the boat off balance, he cuts it free before returning to the hold. Therein, he holds his head in his hands, clearly coming to terms with the gravity of the situation. He quickly notices the hole has been breached once again, but before he can do anything to address this, he is knocked out as a sudden rocking of the boat sends him violently, head first, into a pillar. He awakens, clearly now groggy, with the lengthy, deep cut across his forehead. With the wash from the waves continuing to pour in through the hole in the side of the boat, the water in his cabin is now waist height. This considered, he takes his life raft from the hold, ties it to the yacht, throws it into the sea and opens it. 
He then hops into it and closes it up to prevent any further flooding. The next day, the man awakens to find the worst of the storm has passed. With the remains of his yacht still bobbing around on the surface, he hauls himself back to it by hand to salvage what he can. This, of course, includes his food supplies and water, a sextant and his maps and a series of flares. His last action aboard the Virginia Jean is to tend to his wound. He washes it down in antiseptic before taping it up to aid in the healing process. As he does so, a burst of bubbles from below suggests the boat is about to go down. He climbs out once more and back onto his raft to take in a final glimpse of the yacht before it slips below the surface. Now drifting freely and at the mercy of the ocean's currents, the man returns to his book and attempts to learn how to use the sextant to determine his location. This he does and begins to plot it on a map. We can see that he is in reasonably close proximity to a major shipping channel. In the next significant occurrence, we can see that the life raft has begun to take on water. Concerned, the man attempts to bail it out using an empty tin can that had contained his last meal. He then uses a rag to mop up the remaining water before inspecting his wound. That night, the winds begin to pick up. Clearly worried by this turn of events, the man clings to the sides of his raft. Suddenly, however, it is too capsized and he finds himself underneath it, up to his neck in water, with this small collection of possessions floating around with him. He unzips one of its entry and exit points, swims out, and attempts to rewrite it. Exhausted once more, he collapses on top of the raft, exposed to the elements, covers his ears, and attempts to rock himself to sleep. The next day, we find him atop his somewhat wrecked raft, attempting to reinflate its side with an integrated pump, which quickly becomes detached. He turns back to his sextant and we see he is now significantly closer to the shipping lane. It is not all good news though as he soon discovers his water has become contaminated and is undrinkable. Later though, looking up at the sun, he has a brainwave and cuts open his jerry can. He then uses its cavity, a plastic covering, and a cup to create a solar still. With food, his next priority. After that, he casts a fishing line found in his survival kit. Now within the shipping lane, the man spots an enormous container ship. He lights a flare to attempt to wave it down, but the ship slipped by, its crew apparently oblivious to his presence. Returning to his fishing line, he finds something has bitten. This he attempts to reel in. However, before he can bring it aboard, it is snatched by a shark. We then gaze up at the raft from the depths, as it is circled by scores of these predators. Later that night, another container ship approaches. Once again, the man turns to his flares. He lights one up, which is sent spiraling up into the sky, but is again unseen. He wakes the next day to discover at least his solar still is working though and takes a small sip of water. Turning to his sextant once again, he now notes that he has drifted beyond the shipping lane without being picked up. The next day, with his hope seemingly extinguished, he turns to his notebook to write a message to his loved ones. He folds this up and places it within a glass jar. He then seals this and tosses it overboard with what little remaining energy he has. That night, under the light of the moon, in the distance he spots what he believes to be a boat. With his flares now exhausted, the man builds a fire within the confines of the adapted jerry can, using paper from his notebook. The fire catches, but as he attempts to maintain it, it spreads. Soon, the raft itself catches a light and goes up in flames. The man, as a result, has no option but to jump into the water. In the final sequences of the film, having given up hope, the old chap allows himself to sink down into the depths. From well below the surface, however, he suddenly spots a small boat circling his burning raft. With his hopes renewed, he swims upwards towards it. As he reaches out a hand, it is grabbed by one of the occupants of this craft. Finally, after eight days struggling for his life, he has been saved. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.